Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the PC VR, PSVR 2 adapter, which has been out for about a week now. I've got a, I got some experience with it for a few days and uh, I want to kind of talk about my impressions of it. So if you're looking for a quick summary at the start of the video, I would say a mixed bag. That's my early impressions. I got a mixed bag reception for this thing. Let's start with the negatives first to get them out of the way before we go into the more positive stuff. So the negative stuff I would say is just mainly Bluetooth issues. Uh, if I've learned one thing about this, it's that Bluetooth in general, the technology that is Bluetooth is trash. For me and for many others, because I've been monitoring the situation over on Redis and slash or slash PSVR and places like this where people are talking about it, Twitter too, of course, and I've seen other content creators with the same issues as well. Basically, you get your headset you connect all your wires up, you're good to go, or so you think, and then you run into the issue of connecting your controllers, either because your Bluetooth adapter is not the correct one, or because you didn't have an extension cable, or there's some kind of interference going on with it that Sony never warned you about really, like they should have been. Well, first of all, Sony should have included a Bluetooth adapter within the PC adapter itself, something that they could have had a bigger antenna on, and this could have avoided so many issues. I mean, you've got big names like Eurogamer, Ian Higton, he basically told everyone it's a piece of shit because he couldn't get his controllers to register at all. So that's just massive uh, damage from them. I think that's probably like the biggest media outlet as well who got hands-on impressions of the PC adapter and it's usually negative. So for a lot of people, they were able to just kind of eventually figure out they needed to get the extension cable or the correct adapter or both. For me anyway, it was both and then it started working, mostly. But if you're like me, and from what I can tell, it's if you have the TP-Link UB500, which is on the official list of Sony recommended Bluetooth adapters, if you have that one, you're gonna run into, or you could, I should say, you could run into an issue where one of the controllers, and it seems to be random, I think it's whichever one you turn on first. At least I've been doing some testing with this. It seems to be whichever controller you turn on first, every five minutes or so, roughly, will kind of lock into place and it'll go three degrees of freedom instead of the six degrees of freedom. So you can kind of rotate it around like this, but you can't move it up, down, left, right, the Y, X axis or whatever. So as you can imagine, when I'm trying to play a game like contractor showdown where you need to be quick with your hands to pull out your weapons or whatever and one of your hands just kind of locks in place like it's really frustrating and I still don't have a fix for it and I've tried all the troubleshoot and I've got the extension cable I downloaded I removed the drivers I re-downloaded the drivers I went onto the website to get the latest drivers I swapped the ports around from USB 2.0 to 3.0 and vice versa or whatever and then the extension cables I got two of those a 3.0 and a 2.0 Swap them around to no difference. So my last resort is to get the Asus BT500, which I've heard from people on Redis is the way to go. People who have had the same issues I had switched to the Asus one and all those issues were resolved. So I've ordered that, so it's not gonna be here till Monday, they're telling me on Amazon. So hopefully when I do get that adapter, I'll be able to test it out myself and all my issues will be resolved and then I'm left with something that's you know functional and that I'll be happy with because, you know, as I'll get into the positives later on, when it is working, it's going to be good. Now there was also another issue I ran into immediately before the controllers even, when I was trying to scan my room for the play area, the pass-through camera was not showing up. It was just like a black screen showing that orange mist kind of that you had to clear by looking around. So with the help of Rogue on a, like a Discord voice chat, he was talking me through all these different things. We eventually figured out that the type of motherboard I was using has uh, two different types of USB 3.0 ports. So there's like first generation and second generation. I had it in the second generation one and apparently once you put it into the first generation one or something, it worked. And we'd swap them around and that worked. So basically I just had to swap the ports around but they were all labeled 3.0. So it was like something you wouldn't know unless you had to do some digging. I wouldn't have figured it out if it wasn't for Rogue unless I would have just got lucky you know, and picked the right port just by chance. So that's a lot of my negatives out of the way. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that Sony have not included the Bluetooth adapter within the adapter box as well, especially because it's like, it's lifted away from the PC tower. Like it has enough cable length that you can move it away and get it closer to your controllers and should it should avoid, you know, 
interference that way and also they could have fitted in like an antenna in there as well compared to the tiny little nubs that they recommend with the tiny adapters and in the end it's cost them you know they've got a lot, a lot of like uh, bad PR bad word of mouth if people are going to be googling or youtubing reviews for the PC viewer adapter they're probably going to see the Eurogamer one where the dude is <laughs> Ian Higton he's like I can't remember how long the video is it's like 10 minutes maybe or something of just him troubleshooting he didn't actually get to play a single game and then at the end he said you know don't do it get a quest 3 or something like that so that's you know sony you deserve that you shot yourself in the foot it's also going to be fucking ridiculous as well if i do get this asus bluetooth adapter and that works perfectly but the one that i have already which they recommended if that one is the reason for the issues then it's ridiculous like why are they putting out a recommended list if they haven't actually tested it properly themselves because it's not just me it's a lot of people having these issues but i have to wait until monday till i get that asus one but with all that negativity out of the way, let's get to the positives because there is a lot of positives and man, does it make you realize what you've been missing out and what I've been missing out and personally from just being on PSVR 2 and PS5. I'm gonna start with maybe the most mind blowing thing for me, which maybe sounds very simple. Uh, it was big screen, you know, there was seven of us together in a virtual cinema and there's like, hunt, like oh, I don't know if there's hundreds, but there's like dozens of different backgrounds. So it doesn't have to be a cinema. You can like transport to anywhere and we're just having a great time relaxing just felt like we're all in the same room it was a very cool social experience and it just made you realize you know even psvr1 had some kind of social experience or media player apps as well whereas psvr2 literally has nothing like that so at least not yes apparently some are is common i think there's one called rad that's on the way but it's been on the way for quite some time so we'll believe it when we see it and then as for the games i've played phasmophobia which is you know my top most wanted game I've wanted on PSVR for years. Uh, so when I got the chance to finally play it before the Halloween release on PSVR 2, I was going to jump on that, of course. It was a bit finicky because, listen, that's nothing to do with the PC adapter. That's just PC gaming in general. Like, you have to mess around with settings and stuff like that. But once I found the correct settings and, you know, the jizzer and the low frame rate stopped when I got the right setting, that is when, you know, I was happy with this. And uh, still annoyed, obviously, because my controller was getting locked into place, so there was still always that little bit of frustration, but I was having a good time. Phasmophobia, I think, is the game that I wanted all, I wanted it to be for the years and years I've been talking about it and hyping us up and hoping it's gonna come to us. I think when we get that on PSVR 2 natively in Halloween, it's gonna be a very popular title, the multiplayer, and that is like, it's a mixture of being terrifying and hilarious at the same time because there is a bit of jank going on as well so you'll find yourself playing with friends or whatever and then laughing at shit and scaring each other or whatever so phasmophobia absolutely a great game love that one also contractor showdown the one big genre that we're completely lacking on psvr2 is battle royale and this is basically warzone in vr and the developers have said you know they're looking into a psvr2 version it's on their to-do list so i hope that comes sooner rather than later because i'm playing it on pc using the psvr2 headset of course and it's fantastic. It really is very good, the weapon handling, the way you like check your ammo count by pulling out the magazine and checking the number that way. And it's really amazing how similar they made it feel to Warzone to the point where you, I'd be wondering if Call of Duty, Activision or whatever might be looking into like suing them or something because of how similar some of it is. But the whole time I'm playing it, like especially when you're shooting guns, it's like you're really missing that adaptive trigger. Like I keep waiting to feel the break point on the, each trigger of each gun and it never comes and then the the shot just happens so it's cool you just i'm still having a great time i'm still enjoying that but i can see that being way better on psvr2 and when it eventually comes to psvr2 hopefully sooner rather than later as i said but again like phasmophobia maybe more so than phasmophobia in this game that frustration of that controller tracking was really exacerbated by the fact that it's a competitive shooter and you need to be fully you know alert aware flexible all that and i just couldn't be uh, so that was frustrating but it's an amazing game buried underneath that i think and something that you could put hundreds and hundreds of hours into i think the weapons all feel good. like listen very early days i'm not going to review it or anything like that i've only played like two or three hours of it so it's very very early days but you know the way the weapons work the way you interact with objects in the world the way it you know just feels like it's really built for virtual reality and the fact that there's so many players a huge player count Battle Royale, like I said, it's going to scratch a lot of people's itches. You know, Pavlov is a great game on uh, PSVR 2. It's probably the best shoes around PSVR 2 right now. But Contractor Showdown would definitely give us a run for its money. Obviously, it's going to depend on the person if you prefer the team-based approach versus Battle Royale. And then I've been dabbling a little bit as well. I don't have any footage of it. Blade and Sorcery. I've been dabbling a little bit, a little bit of Blade and Sorcery. I'm kind of using that game to test out things. So when I'm trying to get my controller working, 
I'm going to Blade Sorcery and I'm testing stuff out and obviously I'm still having the issues however when the controllers are trying to find like I'm having a lot of fun in Blade and Sorcery that's kind of also what I really wanted it to be even though I haven't properly started yet I just go into the sandbox mode downloaded a few mods which is really easy it's built into the menu system you go to mods download them it's all easy peasy now i've also downloaded half-life alex skyrim a few others as well but i don't want to touch them until the controllers are working especially half-life alex i kind of don't want to taint that experience of this alleged 10 out of 10 masterpiece with like a wonky controller ruining that for me so i'll be waiting until i get that asus bluetooth adapter so that's all i have to say about the pc adapter if i would recommend it, it i mean it's going to be entirely dependent on what your setup is like if you had a quest already and a pc then maybe i wouldn't recommend it for you but if you're in the situation i'm in where i only had a psvr2 especially if you're someone who feels like psvr2 is lacking in terms of social apps big screen you know vr chat stuff like that then absolutely i could recommend it for those people so yeah anyway let me know if you've got it let me know your experiences or if you're thinking about getting it let me know and also Feel free to recommend any like must-have PC experiences that I need to try out, games, whatever. So yeah, I'm gonna end this video right there. Before I do, let me thank my members whose names are on screen as I speak. They are the following. Moz, Did I Dan, No One Knows, Plank71, Esports Commentator for Hire, Deej the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins the Governor Viewer, Chrome, Superfly AF, Edify Till I Die, Lone Wolf Viewer, Aced, Mr. 777, Geza, and Minus. Welcome to the patch, Minus. And thank you very much for that support. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you to Decepticon also for letting me use your music in all of my videos. Check them out, Decepticon.com. Link in the description somewhere. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.